Hey guys, welcome to uh, a new video. Um, today I am in a uh, Cirrus SR20. Um, I've just got myself checked out in this. Um, and so to celebrate, I flew myself down to Block Island. Um, so, just get the right check checklist up. So uh, I'm just going to be showing the uh, the flight back. Um, right, let's uh, let's go. It's got to be a far flight. Um, so the uh, SR20 is uh, something that I um, have now uh, rented from um, my flight school here in the US, um, and uh, it is a very nice aircraft, and very nice indeed. Um, I, I really enjoyed the flight down. Um, we got a really good um, airspeed. I think we're cruising about 110, 120 knots. Um, and that was indicated true airspeed was more like 125. Which was pretty nice. Um, so the SR20 uh, is a very nice aircraft. Um, <laughs> it's possibly the most difficult aircraft I've ever uh, had the pleasure of taxiing uh, because it's uh, so it's a free castering nose wheel um, so it means that there's <laughs> there's no kind of uh, rudder authority it means that um, if you push the rudder left or right um, it doesn't actually make any difference to where the uh, nose wheel is and it's pretty heavily damped as well um, so it means basically you have to use the brakes to turn um, which is fine in a way, but um, essentially what you're turning isn't necessarily the aircraft, it's the nose wheel that you're trying to turn. Um, and it can be pretty pretty stubborn sometimes. Uh, one of the kind of biggest uh, problems that um, Cirruses seem to have is uh, overheating um, brakes because uh, that's something that you know, people will tend to uh, drag the brakes while they're taxing just because they, uh, they need to turn um, and those brakes will overheat while on the ground. Okay, so we've got no one behind. I'm just going to uh, turn here and uh, we'll do our power checks. So, seatbelt, shoulder harnesses, doors are secure. Brakes, hold. Island Warrior 102 Juliet. Flight controls. Active, runway 28 for departure. Flying the box. Okay, fine. Now. Full and free. Trims. Um, block Island. Set for takeoff. Autopilot. Disconnect. I know that it wasn't active because if it were, we would have had lots of beeping then. Flaps to 50%. Flight instruments and engine instruments. Um, and ultimate and everything like that. So we're on three zero zero one. Um, good. Okay. It's quite cool, actually. Uh, get I've got the uh, electronic checklists, um, which just makes it really nice and easy to do because you can click done when you've done each check, and then you know that you've done it. You've got a visual way of confirming that. Okay, gonna switch over to the right tank, got the boost pump on. Prop is clear. Power lever increases detent. We should expect it to see uh, it going up to 2000 Warrior RPM and then dropping down slightly by about 100, which is exactly what it does. And now bring it back to 1700. The reason you do that first, uh, put it up to the detent, is because um, it's actually a, uh, so it's a variable pitch propeller, um, but it's regulated, it's, you don't have to uh, adjust manifold pressure or anything like that, um, it, it regulates itself, so it more or less flies like a, a constant pitch uh, propeller. Um, let's just keep on going, alternator, yep, good, 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 good. Um, old bus lights, failed lights, yeah, they work and they're not on. Voltage is good. Magnetos check left. Good. And right. 
both within limits and difference within limits. Power lever back to 1000 RPM. Transponder is on automatic VFR. Nav, we've got our flight plan set. Peter, heat not required. Okay, time for takeoff. Let's put this back onto map mode. So, it's got a, um, a glass cockpit in here, which is uh, really nice. So I've got my primary flight display, which has my uh, artificial horizon, and it's got all my nav stuff in there. And I've got my um, multifunction display, which is what I was just using for the checklists, but it's now displaying um, a massive moving map with, uh, with my flight plan on it. Um, and actually the flight plan, you put that in using a, uh, a pair of uh, Garmin 430s, which I'm quite familiar with from, uh, from November Victor, which is quite cool. Okay, so we're uh, just holding short of 28 here. Um, just checking finals, we've got one that's just departed. Um, we've had no one else on the radio and finals looks clear. Block Island traffic, November 128 Foxtrot Alpha, taking 284 northbound departure, Block Island. Okay, let's uh, back taxi on the runway, it's... Uh, Block Island, Warrior 10 Juliet, northbound along the coast, along the west coast, Block Island. Okay, so... <laughs> Because he's a warrior, we might actually overtake him, which would be quite cool. It's uh, it's not the longest runway here at Block Island, but it is tarmac, which is uh, <laughs> which is a plus over Manchester. We're going to come back. We're going to use all available runway. The west be traffic Turkey five west Bravo is eight to the west. Get fire on the localizer for runway seven at west North. quite all the way to the end just because I don't want to hit those landing lights those runway lights okay full power this thing takes quite a bit of uh, right rudder Bird on the runway. Good, good. He knows I'm coming. This 65 knots. Going to lift up. Or rotate, rather. Okay, that speed is at 85 knots, which is my cue to retract the flaps. And we're telling this way three, we're three miles to the east, we'll be transiting 1700, south north to Boston. Two missed jumpers, two missed jumpers over Danielson. Okay. Take our northbound. Yes, I am. Where are you? Uh, no. How far are you? Alright, I'm about four miles out. I'm going to change runways and land on 3 2, so you can go ahead and depart 7. Go ahead. Block Island traffic, Cirrus 8 Foxtrot Alpha is departing to the north, Block Island. Hyper Warrior departing to the north. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, so this thing, it's... Uh, Block Island, Warrior 10 Juliet is at the northern tip of the island, 2600 climbing, Block Island. And Westwood, Cherokee 5, Whiskey Barrows. Uh, okay, you know, look for that traffic. Abandon the approach in in the left base now for 3 2. I have the departing traffic at Westwood. So we've got the Avidyne um, avionics in here. 
Um, and uh, it's not quite the same as the Garmin 1000, uh, although it is very similar. Um, but what we can do is, uh, now that I've got my flight plan in, um, I can engage it into, well, it's got a few different uh, autopilot modes. Um, one of them is uh, heading mode, which is where it will um, follow the heading bug, um, which uh, which can be quite useful when, uh, when you're trying to just you know, come in and approach to an airport, uh, but you don't necessarily want to just go straight overhead it. Um, or it's got nav mode, it's got, got two versions of the nav mode, so the first version, um, it just follows, uh, well, I, I don't know quite exactly, but it, it doesn't follow the GPS, so um, if you have uh, a few waypoints put in, so like, for example, I'm following Putnam VOR, so it might track to the VOR, whereas uh, nav GPS mode, it will follow the flight plan uh, based on GPS coordinates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into GPS nav mode. So that's why it's turning now. One of the things to know is that it doesn't actually regulate um, or control the rudder. So you have to do that manually, which is fine. It also, in theory, has an altitude hold mode, um, although I'm not <laughs> entirely sure how well that works, because it doesn't capture an altitude, uh, even if you set the altitude bug to it. It does seem to hold an altitude when you engage it in altitude mode. It'll capture and hold. It will capture and... Okay, we've got one behind us. Uh, so it will capture and hold the altitude that you're at, um, but it won't climb or descent um, to a new altitude. Um, it does have a vertical speed mode, uh, which, um, so you'll kind of flick between altitude or vertical speed. Um, and vertical speed mode allows you to put in you know, 500 or whatever uh, feet per minute um, climb or, de or, or descent, uh, which is quite handy sometimes. It's approaching November 128 Foxtrot Alpha, flight following. Hey, what's your thing? I have you now. I think a 4 northeast of Quonset, northwest bound out of 1,900. It was your thing? I read our contact, climb and maintain 10,000. Meter 4792, Foxtrot Alpha, radar contact, climb and maintain 10,000. 10,000, meter 4792. Meter 4792, flight heading of uh, 350, vector spacing. 350, corner, meter 4792. Don't worry, we'll see down Quebec Putnam. Providence approach, Warrior 6910, Juliet, 3500, requesting a class to Charlie Jensen. Warrior 6910, Juliet, Providence altimeter 2, Niner, Niner, Niner. 2, Niner, 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 6910, Juliet. Don't worry, we'll see down as you roll out direct Putnam, stay heading. Alright, copy, 1-0 Juliet. 1-0 Juliet, say again. <laughs> uh, what's the last call for us, 1-0 Juliet? 1-0 Juliet, negative. Okay, 1-0 Juliet. Providence approach number 128 Foxtrot Alpha, flight following. 128 Foxtrot Alpha, Providence approach, uh, try back in about 2 minutes, control change out in progress. Okay. Inspiration November 128 Foxtrot Alpha for flight following. 128 Foxtrot Alpha, Providence at birthday position. Remember 128 Foxtrot Alpha is uh, just south east, uh, southwest of Oscar 8 Papa. Hey Foxtrot Alpha, Roger, say your request. Do you just want flight following to where? Uh, if I'm flight following to uh, Fitchburg. Fox Alpha, Spark 0350. 0350, zero, 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 November 8, Fox Alpha. Come on, mate. 0996 Tango traffic, it's your 10 o'clock and 3 miles northbound into getting 5,000. Okay, 
Schmidt, 4792, contact Boston Center, 133.42. 133.42, Cedar 4792. Number 8, Fox Shot Alpha, radar contact, 3 southwest of Richmond Air Park, traffic at 1 o'clock, 2 miles westbound, 4700. Uh, Come to the traffic, looking November 8, Fox Shot Alpha. 9 6 10, uh, advise the VFR decent immediately. Number 8, Fox Shot Alpha, advise the VFR climb immediately. Hey, folks, right up here is visual traffic. Roger. Hey, guys. Um, I thought I'd just show you the inside of the cockpit here, seeing as it's pretty nice. Um, so, down here we've got our controls, so we've got our power and our mixture as normal. Uh, we've got fuel and uh, there's a tank switch over. Um, down here we've actually got where everything is uh, plugged in, that's where all the headphones and stuff go. Um, just down here we've got our uh, transponder, here's the controls for the uh, autopilot. Uh, so we've got our uh, heading mode here which is where we'd use the heading bug, nav mode, uh, it's actually in uh, GPS nav at the moment. Um, we can do approach mode where we, where we load up an approach on the, uh, on the avionics system. Uh, altitude mode which is what we're on at the moment, so it's captured my current altitude. Uh, or vertical speed mode, we can use that to change the vertical speed. Uh, we've got a uh, pair of Garmin uh, 430s here. Um, I've loaded my uh, flight plan into here. And so what I'm intending to do is to use uh, one of them to display kind of information, because basically this is, this is redundant, having this display here. Um, so I'm using kind of basic information and navigation information here. And then this is 68 Bravo, 5 miles from Bevin, turn left. On the other one, I'm going to have all the uh, frequencies and stuff. So this one is for Pitchberg. Um, and now we've got our primary flight display, which has uh, my kind of artificial horizon, uh, airspeed, altitude. Um, here we've got the uh, altitude bug active, that's vertical speed. Uh, heading bug, uh, which is this guy. And you can press that to synchronize the heading bug to where you are. Um, and we just got loads of kind of little things on here and uh, you can set the uh, pressure there and we've got the uh, multifunction display there so this is our massive moving map so we've taken off from uh, Block Island down here which is about to approach uh, Putnam um, which is our kind of turning point, midway point um, it's, a, it's a VOR anomaly and there's Fitchberg up there um, and on this uh, display as well we can uh, view um, flight details uh, get information about Fitchburg um, and uh, we can go over to you know, all the nearest airfields if we needed them. Uh, we've got checklists. Um, so let's go to say flight checklist, cruise checklist. The cruise power is set, hit done. Engine instruments, they're good. Fuel flow and balance. Um, so we've got fuel flow and everything down here. Um, I've set that and mixture lean as required. Um, so that's good, we can do set up and stuff like that, so we'll go back to the map. Then we've got our steam gauges here, um, so we've got the RPM, um, manifold pressure, fuel flow, so you can see it's on about 7.5 gallons per hour at the moment. We've got oil temperature and pressure, which are in the green, we've got voltmeter, alternator, amperage is charging, fuels gas temperature, and this is what we use to lean it out. We've got a cylinder head temperature as well. Number six, eight, Bravo, contact and then down here we've got our backup gauges. So we've got a backup altimeter, um, horizon, and uh, an airspeed indicator. Um, so it's pretty pretty nice in here. It's a, it's a nice environment to be in. Um, we've got the uh, famous CAPS handle, um, which, uh, when deployed, uh, will actually um, shoot a parachute out of the back of the uh, airframe. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously you don't want to use that unless it's absolutely vital. Um, it's pretty comfortable in here as well. Um, we've got nice seats, uh, there's enough legroom in the back and some space for some luggage. Um, although, I mean, the uh, useful weight on the SR20 isn't quite as, as high as the 22. Um, it's just a overall a really nice place. One nine four three, mic contact, approach one one nine point four five. Really nice place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, we've got kind of all the air controls here. I think that's one of the things that I do find with this one. 128 Fox Alpha, contact Bradley, Proton 119.0.
for November 8th, Foxtrot Alpha. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys back up here. Get back to the business of flying an aircraft. Baron 8797 Romeo Bradley Perch, Bradley Altimeter 3005. Delta 1204, Pedro Tano, the center maintained 5000. Rally operation number 128, Foxtrot Alpha, with you, Scorpion 0350, overhead Putnam, 7,000 feet on uh, 29999. 128, Foxtrot Alpha, Bradley Perch, Bradley Altimeter 3005, verify type aircraft and destination. Uh, 3005, and it's a Cirrus SR20 heading to Fitchburg, November 128, Foxtrot Alpha. Roger, I'm staying away to Fitchburg, and now the aircraft type is cut out there, say again. Uh, aircraft type is a Cirrus SR20. Thank you. So we'll just show this to you actually. So we're just getting over here. AC5588, contact Bradley Perch, 123.905. We're just getting overhead our next, uh, well, our only turning point. So because we're in GPS nav mode, what it'll do is it will actually uh, turn the aircraft. Bradley has an end, twin says no one three hotel Charlie, six thousand five hundred. Zero one eight three hotel Charlie, Bradley Perch, Bradley altimeter three zero zero five, verify destination. There we go. Three zero zero five destination, November sixty six, only answer. Thank you. Just give it a bit of rudder. Yeah, pretty neat. What I say, it's an absolutely gorgeous sunset out tonight. It really is a very clear night. Bradley approach, custom jet 684, 13000 for 11000. The kind of night that makes me just so thankful that I have the privilege of being able to fly. 05, 64. Alright, back up you go. One of the things that amazes me is just the number of ponds and boats and people using boats. They're just uh, all over the place. Probably sounds like a bit of a silly thing to say, I guess, but... It's something you don't really get in the UK. Series 8 Foxtrot Alpha, contact lost and approach. 133.0. 133.0 for Series 8 Foxtrot Alpha. Southwest 597, contact Bradley Perch, 123.9 or 5. Southwest 597, number 128, Foxtrot Alpha, just passing past Worcester, maintaining 7,500 feet on 29999, escorting 0350 for flight following into Fitchburg. Number 128, Foxtrot Alpha, Boston Coast, Fitchburg Airport, and Safe Hyper a firm Fitchburg and it's a serious SR20 number 128 Fox Alpha. United 217, climb maintain 7,000. Turn on 5 John. 7,000 out of 217. Number 128 Fox Alpha, traffic 10 to 11 o'clock, 1.5 miles northeast off the Hoppage at 5,000. Call the traffic looking at uh, number 8 Fox Alpha. Uh, November 8, Foxtrot Alpha is visual traffic. Foxtrot Alpha. Fitchburg traffic, uh, Cirrus 8, Foxtrot Alpha is on a very long line on 3 2. We'll stop, Fitchburg.
Bridge Road Traffic Service 8 Fox Road Alpha Shore Final Full Stop 3 2 Bridge Road. Thanks for watching guys, uh, that was a really fun flight actually, I uh, really enjoyed that, so uh, yeah, stay tuned, there's going to be more flight videos coming hopefully, uh, I'm hoping to take a friend up as well uh, in the Cirrus, so uh, we'll see how that goes, uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching, bye. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation, share aviation, a network for pilots, by pilots.